Okay. Alright, so we're gonna continue. So see if you know the your stuff. Okay, let's look at this one. Let's factor them. The numerator would be x plus two, x plus four. And the denominator you have two x in common here, the factor would be x minus y three. Okay. Is there any common factor between the top and the bottom? Obviously no common factor. So you have no common factor, right? So you have no common factor that only tell you one thing, no whole. Okay. Let's go to this next one. So your, your domain involving x cannot equal 0 and x cannot equal to 3, right? 0, 3 here. Okay. So, since the, so I need to check both of them, right? So that would be good. I don't have any, re this is already reduced form. So what's f of 0? f of 0 is going to give you 8 over 0, which is undefined. So imply you have a vertical, s of top line of x equal to 0, which is the y-axis. That's the y-axis. And let's check f of 3, and you're going to, an f of 3 would be what? You replace six times seven, right? No, I'm just doing that one. Five times seven is thirty-five over zero, and which is undefined again for this one. And this imply you're gonna have a vertical as to two line, and the equation would be x equal three. Okay? So you always check the undefined value. The undefined value I mean check the restriction right here. And those will give you either a whole or the equation of the asymptote line, the vertical. Okay. How about horizontal? Okay. Degree on top equal degree in the bottom. And what's that tell us? That looks like that case two then, right? This imply I do have a horizontal asymptote line, and the equation would be y equal y equal what? The coefficient of whatever you have over here, so it would be one half. Okay. The quotient of those two numbers, one divided by two. Okay, since you have a horizontal, you're not going to have an oblique. Okay. Okay, next one, domain x does not equal to 4. So x does not equal 4, that's your domain. And obviously your, your domain would be what? From negative infinity to 4, from 4 to positive infinity, right? Okay. And so if you factor this one out, x, that would be negative 3 and a plus 1. And this looks like no common factor. Okay. Uh, no common factor. Imply no whole. All right now, since x cannot equal to four, so I need to check four for my vertical asymptote line. So your your domain here, where it is continuous, that you determine whether you have a hole or you have a vertical asymptote line. You cannot have a hole and a vertical asymptote line at the same x value, right? 
So there's no hole, so therefore I'm checking this here. So that will give you what? Eight, nine, nine times so it should be nine over zero, one replace here, which is undefined. So anytime you have undefined, that means you have a vertical asymptote line. Right? VA means vertical asymptote line. And the equation would be x equal four. Pick up that number. And do I have horizontal? Well, no. However, the degree on top is bigger than the one degree more than the bottom. So you have oblique. Why do you have oblique? Top degree, top is one more than degree. On, in the, on the bottom. Okay. So how do we do that? How do we find that? Divide it out. Right? And I think we already did that one. Remember? Did we do that one? Uh, didn't we do that one a little while? I think we did. Well, okay. Maybe you want to review anyway, so let's let's do that. Again, 2x to the second minus 5x minus 3 divided by x minus 4. Go into how many times? 2x times. And this would be minus 8x. Then you subtract them. And that will give you positive. You don't have to put parentheses in there because the sign will change. And that becomes a positive 3x minus 3. And it goes into how many times? It goes in there plus three times. So you have three x minus 12, and you subtract them, and that will give you a remainder to be, uh, what's the remainder? Negative nine, not positive nine. All right, I said you could all you always omit the nine. The remainder is irrelevant to your problem when x get larger and larger because that's become 9 over my x minus 4. So when x get larger and larger, that becomes 0. So so you have what? y equal 2x plus 3. How's that? OK. This is your oblique line. OK. We're going to almost wrap up graphing now, guys. All right. So let's 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 do this. As x get larger and larger, okay, approaching from the right, and so in order to sketch your graph, you need to what happen when your your x value get closer and closer to the vertical asymptote line, right? Okay, and. So graphing rational function, you need to look at the behavior of x approaching from the right of your vertical asymptote line and from the left of your vertical asymptote line. Coming from right is your right hand side. Coming from the left would be your left hand side, right? Okay. So there's only two possibility. Okay. Coming from the right, either they're pointing up or they're pointing down because the y value is either positive or negative. Okay, so I'm going to draw you something here. Let's assume this is x equal a. If it's coming from the right, it's positive. This is the right. That means it got to point up that way. It's coming from the right. Uh, that's is negative. So therefore, that means pointing down. Right there. Okay. That's coming from the right. Now you have one coming from the left because that will wrap up your your complete graph. You need to look at from the right, from the left. Coming from the left, okay, is either positive or infinite. If it's coming from the left, it is positive, it will be pointing up. So that is this part. Okay? If it's coming from the right, 
I mean, coming from the left, is going to be pointing down, which is negative infinity. So this portion would be pointing down that way. How's that? Okay. All right. Let's look at the actual one. So you say x cannot equal to what two? And if I replace two back in there, I will have an undefined value. So that means x equal two will be right, my vertical acetyl line. Now I need to look at what happened coming from the right. Okay. As x approaching two from the right. So that means when I get closer and closer to two, is it going to be positive value, infinity, or negative? So how you do that? All you have to do is pick a number that is closer to two. So I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick say top out 2.1. So if I replace x with 2.1, I don't have to know what the number is. Okay. That means the top will be 2.1 would be positive, and the bottom is 2.1 minus 2 will also be positive, and positive divided by positive is positive. So therefore, when I'm coming from the right, would be pointing up, which is going to be positive infinity. Okay. Now let's look at what happened when coming from the left. How's that? Uh, yes x approaching 2 from the left. That means I'm coming from this direction. Uh, right there. Coming from the left. So let's let's see. Now that means I pick a number that is get closer and closer to 2 from the left. How about 1.9? 1 1.9 1 is, is this way, right? So I'm going to pick 1 1.9. So this implies, if I replace x with 1.9, it's going to be positive on top. x is 1.9. If I replace this with 1.9, and 1.9 minus 2 is going to be a negative number, right? So a positive divided by negative will be negative. That means it will, when you're coming from the left, it become pointing down, going to be negative infinity. Right? So in this case, you have positive infinity, this will be negative infinity. Okay. All right, now we're ready to graph. Now I put all those together. You need to find a hole. If there is one, you need to find a vertical acetyl line. And you need to find a horizontal. And you need to find an oblique. If there is, if there is one. Okay? So let's start. So let's start with factoring. That tell me the domain, okay. the domain in interval notation form. The domain for well, what? From negative infinity to negative 2, union with negative 2 to positive 2, union with 2 to positive infinity. That's because x cannot equal to 2 or negative 2. Right? Okay. All right, B part. Find all asymptote and whole. Right. Then you're going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, and it determine the behavior as, as the vertical, I mean, uh, come closer to the vertical as the line. And then this this part right here, that means the horizontal as the line. And behavior. Okay. Hey, right, so let's go. Let's look at B. Hey. Right. Is there a hole? Obviously, H stands for hole. I, I, you're going to get confused here. Let's put hole in there so you don't think it's hole or And uh, No hole. None. And you know why? Because there's no common factors. That's why I was spending so much time up there. Uh, and then you have a, what? Vertical asymptote line? Okay. Let's see, you have one. Well, you need to check 2 and negative 2, right? So f of 2 will equal 2 to 0, which is undefined. So you know you have a vertical asset line of imply you have x equal 2. Negative 2, negative 2 over 0, 
is also undefined, so that means you have x equal to So basically you have two, okay? Very aggressive to I. Now let's go to horizontal. Uh, this is where we horizontal asymptote line. All right. Now we we'll go back to the theorem. Say, so let's check the degree. The degree on top. Numerator is smaller than the degree on the bottom. So imply you have one. So this means horizontal, so I don't have to rewrite it all the time. And horizontal is y equals zero. Okay? And then let's find the x and the Because you have the more point you have, there are to kind of help you sketch the graph. Right? So the x and the is what? To find the x and the sep, you go like y equals zero. And then you solve that. What is the fraction? You could clear the fraction. And your x intercept is x equals zero. To find a y intercept, you're gonna let y you're gonna let x equal zero. Alright, so that would be y equal zero over negative four, which is zero. Okay. Okay, H A is 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 your end behavior, right? So those are your okay. If you have horizontal, uh, oblique, those are your end behavior. So let's graph. So let me do it over here. Okay, I'm going to graph uh, vertical because there's no hole. So let's grab x equal what? Two. And x equal negative two. And what else do I have? I have a horizontal. And horizontal is what? Y equals zero. And y equals zero is, I'm gonna put it in right here, which is your, your x-axis, right? And then I'm gonna plot the point zero zero. Right. Now I don't have enough point to connect them together, so I'm going to look at the behavior. Okay, the behavior approaching. Right. Let's look at from the right. Right. I'm coming from the right. Right. What do I get? Let me do it over here so you can see. As x approaching from the right of two. What's the y value? Is it positive infinity or negative infinity? Okay. So you pick something that is closer to like 2.1. So you replace x with 2.1, your y value will become what? It will approaching 2.1. Obviously it's going to be positive infinity. This would be positive. That's going to be positive. Okay. So it's going to be pointing up. Right? Okay, and obviously in this case, it's since I it got it approaching to your horizontal asymptote line, never crosses, right? It could cross it, but in this case, it's crossing it. All right, so I'm going to look at as x approaching two from the left, and what's y going approaching to? Right, I pick 1.99 or 1.9, so x is 1.9. The top is positive. When this is 1.9, they're going to be smaller than f 4, so they're going to be a negative, and positive divided by negative is negative, that will be pointing down. Okay. Now, there are other possibilities in here. Now, I have a point now that go to the point. I either turn and come down that way, or just go up that way. So I need, I need to look at the behavior. So as x approaching negative 2 from the right, uh, okay, that means I'm coming negative 2 right here. If I replace x for negative 1.9, 1.9, negative 1.9 is right here. Okay, 
and let's go let's see what that would be negative okay and that would be 1.9 is more than 4 right negative so that would be a negative negative divided by negative so y we're approaching it, what a positive infinity over there right so that means you gotta come up here and go up Okay, so let's look at the other one. As x approaching negative 2 from the left, that means I'm coming this direction of the graph, get closer and closer to this line right here, at Virgo is the line. I'm going to pick negative 2.1. So when I put x for negative 2.1 here, when I square negative 2.1, that's going to be bigger than 4. So I have a negative divided by positive. That will be negative, so that will be pointing down. Y would be negative infinity, and then that will give me the complete graph because because it will approaching to the to your horizontal as the two lines on the other tail end. That's that is your end behavior, right? So you have that as your graph. Okay. We're almost done. Now be patient. If. All right, so let's do this one. Let's factor. Before we do that, let's say the domain first. If it's domain, uh, x can I go negative 3. So your domain will go from what? Negative infinity to negative 3. You know what negative 3 to positive infinity. You only have two sections there, right? Okay, and the next thing we want to do is, is look at the way of a whole line. Okay, but this is factorable. Right? This would be x minus three, x plus three, and you know the common factor divides out. The reduced form is x minus three. So you have com common factors. imply whole and uh, add one. Since x can I go negative three, have O at negative three. And what's the value? So you need to find f of negative three. F of negative three is negative six. Negative three minus three is negative six. So here's your whole. Negative three and negative six. Okay. Now your reduced form doesn't have any fraction. So you have no vertical asymptote line because no undefined value here, right? So no vertical asymptote, okay? And there's not a fraction, so you actually don't have any horizontal, right? Okay, but you have oblique, but that line is the oblique when you graph them, so let's graph. All right? graphing the line right here, y equal x minus 3. So your x in this step is negative 3, and your, and your y in this, your y is negative 3, and this is, ne this is positive 3 here. Or you could go your slope, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, you look at that point. Okay. Then you will have a line, except you have a hole. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, and the hole is right here, guys. There you go. That's your hole. Negative three, negative six. So you do have a hole okay, in your graph. Okay. Let's continue. All right, so we're going to factor. I have a piece of, so to determine the domain, this would be minus two and then plus one. So that tell you what? X cannot equal negative one half. X cannot equal to two. So your domain 
will be negative infinity to negative one half, union with negative one half to two, and then union with two to positive infinity, right? Okay, let's factor that. X plus one. Seven one. Hi. Are you recording? What? Are you recording? Yeah. You're recording right now? Yeah. I'm to use the room at two. Okay, I'm, just let I'm, I'm almost done. I'm sorry about that. That's right. You, can, you can't quite hear me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> So let's uh, let's continue. Okay. Okay. So do I have any common factor? Yes, you do have a common factor. So you have a common factor. You notice I divide it out. Okay. And what's it tell you when you have a common factor? There is a whole. Imply whole and add two. So you need to find the whole. So f of 2, so you need to look at the reduced form, and I'm writing down the reduced form, all right? So there would be 3, and this would be 4, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, you know. So your whole is 2, comma, 3, 5. And then you have a, how about V, vertical as to line? Your vertical as supply, and you, then you're gonna have to check f of negative one half, and f of negative one half would be undefined. So that would be what? One half over zero, which is undefined. So you imply vertical as the line is x equal negative one half, right? Okay, then you have a what? Then you have horizontal. Right, S to the line, and horizontal F to the line is, is the degree on top and degree on the bottom are equal. So you would have degree top equal degree on the bottom. Imply Y equal us, in this case would be one half, right? Okay, so since you have a horizontal, you have no vertical, I mean no uh, oblique. So let's graph it. There's one, there negative one half is over here, and there's one, and there's positive one half, right? Right there. And what else you have? Two, comma, three fifth, and three fifth is bigger than one half, so therefore it got to be on top of that line. All right, the x in up and the x in this is negative one. Okay, make sure you know how to do that, guys. We just let y equal zero and find and solve. And the y in this up, the y in this up, you're gonna let x, let x equal zero, so it'll give you positive one. Now, I got enough points, so I don't have to look at the end behavior. So when I connect those together, it will go like this. It gotta go that way, it cannot go down, all right? And you this behavior going that way, right? So this one, right, it usually, it when I, you have no point to connect, but obviously you gotta go down, and it gotta go toward the S of the line, all right? Okay, this one where I did, one, uh, the domain's, domain was what, negative infinity to four, union with four to positive infinity, right? And then what happened? And then you have what? Two X, we just did that one a little while, and negative three and positive one, no hole. If you look at your previous example, that's where it is, guys, okay? So I have to quickly do this because we're gonna use the room here, okay? That is problem four on the on the other section. And then you could just copy the thing down. You have a vertical asymptote of x equal four. 
because that will be undefined. And you hit now, you can have oblique. And I just did that one for you. You divide it out, the oblique was y equal 2x minus 3. Okay? So let's graph it. X equal 1, 2, 3, 4. Ooh. I, I think I, I, need, I need more space here. 1, 2, 3, 4. There you go. And let's graph the oblique line. 1, 2, 3. And you get 2, 1, 2, 1. And you, that is your, your oblique as of line. Right? That's this one. Okay? And let's get the graph. And now I need some x in this up. The x in this up is 3. Okay. Uh, what is it? Next one. There we have it. Oh, one, one. I, bu, 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 it's supposed to be a plot miscopy, guys. So I'm going to redo it again. This would be one, two, three. And this is your, this is your, see, I just copied that one. Okay. So there's your x in this up. And negative one half is your, okay? So connect them together, that will give you, because this guy come from here, take a turn, come back down. And then you have another section, another section will be right here. How's that? Okay. Okay, that's all right. So I hope you work. I'm going to send you guys a assignment sheet so you could do it. I'll just finish chapter four, all right? Because the other section we, we have to omit. We don't need to cover those. Okay, well, don't forget to email me when you have problem.